Thank you and good morning. Thank you for joining us here at Internet Week. We are so excited to have such wonderful startups here on our panel. We are here today to talk about making it in New York, creating a startup, nurturing a startup, and what is new, unique about New York City for creating your next tech company. So before we bring our uh, panelists on stage, as you heard, it's a really exciting array of companies. Um, we'd like to just show a quick video that we feel reflects the momentum, the energy, and the creativity of New York City's tech sector. So enjoy. We are do something.org. We are second market. We're Buzzfeed. We're Tudor Spray. We are Shapeway. We are Quirky. It's like a baby whale that's growing. <laughs> New York City is the hottest place in the tech universe. To improve access to healthcare by putting patients first. Activating young people to rock causes they care about. We pick the top ideas submitted to our website and then we get to work. Creative. Connecting. Prototyping. Building. Shooting. <laughs> That's too many. I like working here because it's just such an exciting place. I think it's fair to say there's simply no better place than New York City to build a digital business. We are made. 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 In New York. Great. Well, thank you. Um, so before we get started with our conversation, I want to make sure that you all have a sense of who the people on the stage are, what their companies do. Um, so we'll quickly give introductions. So please, you know, say your name, say your company, what you do, how long you've been around, and, and if you want to share, you know, how many employees, something like that, just to give a sense of where you are in the life cycle of your startup and your company. Um, and I'll kick it off. Uh, so my name is Rachel Stern Hout. I'm the city's chief digital officer and I've been with New York City serving as part of Mayor Bloomberg's administration for a little bit over two years. And we actually introduced uh, Made in New York and We Are Made in New York, which is an economic development initiative in February. And the goal was to reflect the phenomenal tech momentum that we're seeing thanks to companies like the ones that we have here on stage and the ones in the video and also to make sure that people are aware of this outside of New York, that we are encouraging engineers and entrepreneurs to come here, to become a part of the tech scene, to learn about the skills that they need to participate, to launch their company here, and to find a job here. So we also have a map of where all the tech companies are in New York City. You can filter by which ones are hiring, and really there's just a great sort of array of resources that help you to do those things here in New York City. And who better than New York City's own tech companies to be the ambassadors for that program. So you may have seen the ads in the subways and the taxis and online, over 150 million impressions, many of that donated by Made in New York tech companies. And what makes a Made in New York tech company is a company that bases 75% or more of its development here in New York City. So really recognizing that the city is not only a powerhouse in amazing industries like real estate, finance, fashion, media, et cetera, but increasingly engineering, technology, and this is not just sort of the marketing and sales arms, but truly where we're basing operations for so many tech companies. So, um, so that's what we're focused on. You can find out more at wearemadeinny.com, and soon we'll be hearing the stories firsthand from the companies that we have here on stage. So Carter, you want to tell us more about Artsy? Thanks, Rachel. Um, <clears throat> honored to be here, uh, honored to be a Made in NYC uh, startup. Um, so my name's Carter, I'm the founder and CEO of a startup called Artsy. Uh, we are trying to bring the art world online, which means we work with uh, galleries, art fairs, auction houses, uh, museums, uh, to bring their art online, uh, make it freely accessible to uh, anyone in the world with an internet connection. That's the educational component of what we do. And on the commercial side, uh, we help connect um, artists and their artworks uh, with a global audience, uh, facilitate marketing uh, and sales for them. Um, we uh, are about 45 uh, employees right now. Uh, we launched uh, six months ago. Um, and uh, yeah, I always like to say that as a company whose core value is bringing together uh, not just science and technology, but also art and design, uh, we really think of ourselves as a company that only ever could have uh, existed and thrived in uh, New York City. Wow, great. Alexa? Uh, I'm Alexa Von Toba, the founder and CEO of LearnVest. 
Uh, the company's been around about three years, uh, and we are trying to make financial planning uh, as consumable as getting a gym membership. So uh, users can come to LearnVest. There's tons of free tools and content to learn about what you need to do with your money. Um, but if you want to upgrade, we actually connect you to a certified financial planner who's on our staff. They're all across the country in all four time zones, uh, and they'll give you unlimited access to advice. So uh, we've raised about $25 million led by Excel, uh, and we are now between employees, uh, consultants, uh, and just starting interns as of uh, this Monday, about 100 employees. Wow. Great. Thanks, Alexa. Oliver? Thanks so much. My name is Oliver Carrasso. I'm founder and CEO of ZocDoc. It's a company that strives to be the patient's health ally. We help people you know, connect with doctors, find them, search by insurance, you know, search by locations, also search by um, availability. So you can go on our website and actually book an appointment 24-7. It's, it's a major uh, pain point uh, that our patients uh, you know, enjoy using. We also ha start helping them with uh, check-in registration information that they can fill in for one doctor and then you know, just continue to use uh, for all other doctors so you never have to fill out these forms again. Uh, Three million patients a month uh, use ZocDoc to, uh, to um, find a doctor and connect with one. We've been around since 2007 and we have roughly 450 employees. Wow, wonderful, thanks. And Jonathan? Uh, it's great to be here. Jonathan Zabuski, uh, CEO of Seamless. Uh, it's a pleasure of working uh, with Rachel in the mayor's office and seeing such great growth uh, in New York. Uh, for those who don't know, Seamless is an online and mobile service that connects diners with over 12,000 restaurants around the United States and the UK, um, helping people place orders for delivery and takeout. And, and for diners, it's really a local discovery platform, helping you decide what to eat, uh, um, where to eat, what to eat, and ultimately placing that order across uh, a smartphone, a tablet, uh, or even the web. And for, for restaurants, we're really helping small business compete more effectively, helping them drive new diners to their restaurant, managing CRM, loyalty, engagement, and ultimately managing their operations more efficiently. Um, we have been around uh, since 1999. Uh, we are in probably chapter number four. Um, it's been terrific to see uh, the, the, the New York City uh, startup scene uh, continue to evolve. Um, we are uh, just over uh, 300 people. Um, that's it. Great, thank you. Um, an awesome sort of collection of real consumer web powerhouses from New York City and great names. So I think we'll talk a little bit. We'll have basically about half an hour of conversation, then we'll open it up to questions from the audience. Um, and I think I'd love to start with why you decided to, to base your company in New York City. And then we can also get into some of the challenges of being in New York City and unique advantages and sort of how you deal with all that. So whoever wants to jump in, why did, uh, obviously you all have great companies. You could have founded them or you know, grown them, moved them to anywhere in the country. Why did you decide to found and launch your startups and companies here in New York City? Um, well, LearnVest aims to really disrupt the financial planning space, which is a pretty outdated, not so sexy space. Uh, much like uh, ZocDoc did for uh, helping really empower patients, we're tr trying to help empower the everyday American. Um, and this is the finance capital of the world, so it made a ton of sense. Uh, but also we have a large media component creating tons of content and this is also the media capi capital of the world. So for both of those reasons, it made a lot of sense. That's great. We hear that a lot with um, sort of the intersection of so many big industries can help and as all of those evolve and become more digital, there's a huge amount of opportunity. Anyone else see that with disrupting industries? I mean, I think the, the elephant in the room is obviously, you know, why didn't we go to Silicon Valley and San Francisco, right? And I think there are actually some distinct advantages that New York can offer. So for a company like ours, where you know, we need to be good not only on the engineering end of this, but this is really a people uh, business as well, because you know, patients are people, doctors are people, office managers are people, we need operations, we need sales, we need a lot of other talent pools that are very, very easily accessible. You know, in New York, and then you have the advantage, you know, starting a movement the way that ZocDoc does, where we say, hey, healthcare should be a lot simpler, a lot more accessible, right? Like, where better to start this than in New York, where one of six, every six doctors gets trained? You know, you want to get them early, you want to get them, you know, at the point where they actually still formative and can think differently about what they want the patient experience to be. So that was a that was a huge, uh, you know, element to it, and I I would also add to that that. I think since we started in 2007, this question gets asked less and less. You yeah. know, like everyone completely gets why you would start your startup in, in New York. I think you know uh, the, the mayor's office has done a great job in um, 
explaining that not only to New Yorkers, I'm a New Yorker by choice, I love the city, it's totally clear to me like why someone would want to be here, but also tell that out in the, in the schools that are on the uh, northeastern uh, you know, shore where these engineers always thought they have to go to San Francisco in order to find a job, and now it's clear to them, yeah, you can stay in New York, there's a healthy, vibrant ecosystem. It's not only this one company or this two or three companies where you can actually like, go on and have a career. There's an abundance of different companies, and you, you know, this is a good choice. You don't have to leave and, and go west. That's great. Yeah, I would say for, for Seamless, you know, trying to disrupt also another sort of slow moving, uh, you know, slow to adopt new technology industry, you know, for us really two main drivers. One is diversity of thought, and I don't think you're going to find a place, and, and having lived in San Francisco for eight years, a wonderful place, the diversity of thought, whether it's culturally or whether it's the experiences people have, um, I just think that the, the, the number of new ideas that come together um, you know, here are just outpaced anywhere else in, in the world and in the country, at least in my view. And then you know, second for us, at least in our case, is proximity to a really broad range of constituents. And much of our thought is not happening inside of our four, four walls. It's actually happening in the restaurants, with the consumers, out on the streets, you know, in these kitchens, talking to owners and operators. And the ability to access you know, so many thousands of them in such close proximity to our headquarters really you know, creates a lot of advantage for us. That's great. Oh, can um, you yeah, I guess like, yeah. just to add, um, uh, I, I'm definitely one of the biggest uh, champions of the New York startup scene. Uh, I helped start the New York Startup Digest out here, actually. But um, the company actually, well, I guess I started in college. But uh, after college, I actually moved to Silicon Valley um, because at a business plan competition, uh, an incubator out there offered me free office space. And so free office space uh, was, was a big draw. Um, but uh, I think I eventually ended up moving the company back to New York not as much for strategic reasons at the time, so much as simply, uh, I think, ran out of money and needed to live with my parents. Um, <laughs> but Fair it's, uh, I think it's very powerful from a recruiting perspective, being able to say to the top students, considering where to, where to go, what startups to join on what coast, that you know, as, a, as, a young, as having spent time as a young single person in Silicon Valley, that's not where you want to be. Uh, straight after college. Uh, there's a lot more New York can offer beyond just the diversity uh, of industry. Um, it's a really fun place to be when you're, uh, when you're young. And uh, for our industry uh, in particular, it's quite extreme. Saying that New York City is the art capital of the, of, of the country is an understatement. Over 50% of the entire US art market flows through this island. Wow. Um, so it, it's really kind of, and, and globally, it's about 60% of the world between New York and London. Um, so I think we really had no choice. That's fantastic. So hearing a lot, so there's quality of life is one of the things um, that attracts people here. The diversity of ideas that, you know, the creative capital of the country. Um, and another thing that comes up a lot, it's sort of obvious, but uh, the users. I mean, your users are probably in New York City. Whenever we talk, and in the mayor's office, we're always looking to use the social media platforms where New Yorkers live online. And when we speak with social media platforms, we always find out that their number one user base is in New York City, which makes sense. We have the most people. We're connected. We like to express ourselves. Um, but it's a good reminder that if you're looking to launch something to the consumer market, um, your people are really here. Um, and I should also add, I mean, Oliver is saying great things about the administration. What also helps us in the city to make this even more of a priority and support the industry is the mayor himself is a technologist who has built an incredibly successful tech company as an entrepreneur that's, that's data-driven, that's a tech company. So, so we have that going for us. Um, but we also know, um, you know it's, it's, it's not always easy. So I'd love to hear also, you know, have you encountered any resistance when you were founding your company here? I don't know, Carter, whether it was from the incubator moving, moving here, was there a concern from investors? Did you ever have to sort of persuade them, yes, this makes sense, we're going to be able to find the people we need? Um, you know, how did you overcome that, and has that changed at all, I guess, throughout the course of, of having your startups? I'd comment a little bit. I mean, you know, one of the one of the challenges is it's very costly here. I think that's you know very clear, and so you you can you can attract a lot of young people out of college to be here, and people spend all their money on their rent and and going out. After a couple of years, of course, you people you find they find themselves in this difficult spot, and so I do think the cost of living you know can be somewhat you can be somewhat you know prohibitive. Hopefully, you make up with that and in you know, creating stock options and things like things like uh, like that. I mean, in our case, you know, we've chosen to selectively move certain areas of our 
company into, into other parts of the country. We're still, we're made in New York. We take great pride in what we're doing here. Uh, we've chosen really to have our, our technology, our product, our marketing, really the lifeblood of the company be here, certain small aspects of it be somewhere else. So we're balancing the two, the, the cost for the company, attracting the right, the right people, um, and also creating opportunity for people to start here and then move into other places uh, as well. Right, that yeah. makes sense. I mean, it's an interesting uh, thing. I mean, while it is challenging, I, I, you know, we started uh, ZocDoc in my co-founder's apartment. It was up in Harlem, at the most, uh, most room of any of us, and we were congregating there until the ceiling came down, and we had like fight with the landlord. And so it was definitely challenging. It also creates uh, great wartime stories. I think once you are you know, of a certain size, obviously the real estate is always a challenge, right? It's lumpy. Mm -hmm. Like we go through these cycles of oh, you know, like. This looks much too big for us, and and then it's it suddenly elbow to elbow, and there's not <laughs> there's not a, a, a whole lot of things that that you can do around it. And then finding adequate space that is actually you know startup friendly, so that you don't just go down there, and, and if you're not wearing a you know two button suit and a tie, you look like the help. You know that that's that those are the kind of environments that we need to find more of. I think it's starting to happen, and more and more landlords are, are warming up to the idea of having a startup you know renting with them. Um, you know, we are certainly very, very happy with where we are, but the real estate was always, you know, a challenge. We, have, we, have, you know, we, we used to, our second office was right across from Bernie Madoff's jail. And I think every time one of our sales people sold something, they did their little victory dance, and he could probably see them. I'm still thinking what he sort of uh, thought about that. But this is the kind of real estate that, that you, we had to take. Great. Um, I think that probably one of the biggest challenges is hiring technologists. Mm -hmm. uh, so LearnBest has uh, about 18 full-time technologists now, uh, and we're trying to hire, you know, 10 more. Uh, and I just think, uh, I know this is a challenge for all startups, so that's one. Uh, I think uh, just in general, funding gets easier as you get bigger mm -hmm. um, and as you make more progress. So, you know, a seed round in, in New York or anywhere in the country is always really hard. Um, it's getting easier. When I dropped out of I dropped out of business school in 2008 slash nine, uh, and there weren't really a lot of seed networks. Now there's TechStars, there's General Assembly, there's a lot of really great infrastructure. You guys have done an awesome job. Um, so I feel like that problem has gotten better of connecting uh, angels to good ideas. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think uh, hiring is always something in scaling. Hiring and scaling, and we just outgrew our floor, uh, which we thought uh, a five-year lease sounded like plenty of space, and it's been less than a year, and now we need more. Um, so space is always a problem. I would, I would comment that I think the uh, recruiting problem has gone way down. I mean, relative to Silicon Valley, I, I don't know. I think there's just so many amazingly talented people now that are really warming up to New York and, and we've certainly seen that recruiting has gone a lot a lot easier. Maybe that's just a function of us growing. I would say um, one problem maybe is that in Silicon Valley, my experience from st startups there is that because there's no distraction, there's nothing to do. Right. It's like a monastery and people just hunker down and like Will will work a lot more intensely. I mean, I guess that's both good and bad. But that is one, as one, yeah, as one Silicon Va Fa Valley founder put it to me, he's like, <coughs> it's a monastery, you know. Right. And so it, he said it's very good for for being focused. So that was maybe one. Yeah, and we've heard that a lot. I mean, I also just want to sort of um, also mention because we're very aware of these challenges. I mean, this, these are the same things we hear constantly. The main needs of tech startups in New York City are talent real estate, and there, it is true that the quality of life can go both ways, um, and hopefully, you know, as people are become more mature and are able to balance, um, you know, their, their own quality of life and, and those elements, it is true. When there's a monoculture, all you're doing is building. Um, perhaps later on, the monoculture is, is less enticing, and, and you know, the, the advantage is you're fully focused. The disadvantage could be less diversity of ideas because there does start to build up a little bit of that bubble and echo chamber of the tech sector. So I, but I totally agree, it goes both ways. Just to mention a few um, options in terms of space, both for all of you, but also for um, anyone who's watching on the live stream. Um, so the city has a few different programs. Obviously, there's the red hot markets of you know Flatiron area, you know close to where we are, as well as uh, Dumbo, which has about 99% occupancy for their commercial real estate and. We can't help you in those markets because they're doing pretty well on their own. We, the mayor believes very strongly in competition, free market. 
there are many different um, opportunities and resources and benefits for other areas of New York City. So for example, right now there's a competition um, that will be opening up in uh, uh, shortly, um, the uh, Take the Helm competition. You can learn about this on wearemadeinnewyork.com slash launch, um, where you can get uh, grants for up to hundreds of thousands of dollars to move to downtown Manhattan, where there is lots of very high quality commercial real estate space. Um, as well as there are a number of discretionary uh, benefits for areas of downtown Brooklyn, um, the Navy Yard. The Navy Yard actually right now is fully, is fully occupied. Um, but there's, there are different areas and there's different opportunities where we can offer, offer space there um, at, at lower rates. Uh, there's also incubators that the city runs itself. Um, the city also invests in General Assembly, which a lot of people know. And uh, there's, a, there's a network of several incubators across the five boroughs where people can find that low cost office space. Talking about talent, obviously this is one of the number one priorities of the city, of our office at NYC Digital, the New York City Economic Development Corporation, which does great work in this area, and the mayor himself. Um, this is the reason behind the NYC Applied Sciences uh, Initiative. And if you're not familiar with that, that's the initiative that's bringing the massive new engineering campus to, Cornell, to Roosevelt Island, the Cornell Technion School. It's also led to the uh, Center for Urban Science and Progress at NYU Poly and Columbia University's uh, Data Sciences Institute. And what this will do is add 2,000 PhD engineers to New York City um, at its height when it's fully built out. That's a little bit of a ways off, but right now the beta class is actually in progress, they're housed at Google's headquarters, which, which they donated as the, space, as the campus is built out. Um, and this is because we know that we need to make long-term investments and, and shorter-term investments um, in order to really solve for this. It's also part of why the mayor is such a strong proponent of immigration reform, because we know that a lot of this talent um, does exist. This is a national challenge. We talk regularly. So um, just to make sure that people are aware of those challenges, also it's why we launched We Are Made in New York, so that people know there are thousands of jobs here. I think. Perhaps in the past, the, con the perception has been that if I move there, what if it doesn't work out? I won't be able to find another gig. We want people to know there are thousands of opportunities. So again, all that's on wearemadeinnewyork.com. Uh, there's a lot of programs the city has, and we're just trying to make sure that people are aware of it. So, um, so a couple of other things. One thing we hear a lot about is uh, the New York City tech community. So I'd love to hear how that has played a role in helping your company launch, um, whether you were advised or mentored by anyone in the community. Maybe it's not even in tech, maybe it's in business in general. Um, and also what, you know, things like whether it's the New York Tech Meetup, how you see the vibe being different. I'm sure a lot of you have spent time on the West Coast as well as the East Coast and what really makes our tech community distinct here in New York City. Anybody want to go? Jonathan, you look Yeah, I mean, here. it's funny. Uh, my, my last go around before I had my, uh, my stint on the West Coast, I, I was part of Movie Phone. And so if you think back to, uh, for those, uh, maybe I'm dating myself a little bit. This is pre AOL <laughs> days. Uh, but that was really you know, one of my, one of my you know, really, uh, you know, really interesting experiences in the late 90s working with this group who founded Movie Phone. And really the first go around, really the first. The, the first round of uh, you know technology innovation that that was going on, and so you know for me reconnecting with those guys who are now all running companies, whether it's Return Path or whether it was Mimeo, uh, you know a bunch of a bunch of CEOs have come out of uh, you know the movie phone, you know post AOL days and the next uh, next thing. So over the last couple of years, what I've seen is you know we were talking about this before. I mean a year and two and three years have made such a huge difference. There's so much more experience here. There's so many, you know, so many more people who have either spent time on the West Coast but are now doing it in a New York way that I find that it's much easier to build you know, a network here where you're actually getting very valuable advice from people who've been through a lot of challenges locally as opposed to making calls to CEOs on the West Coast and trying to go through whether it's fundraising or whether it's talent building. Actually, you know, just the community, the ecosystem has really, I think, accelerated very significantly over the year or two. And I would echo what Carter was saying before. We have just seen a marked difference. I'm sure it's in part because of our growth, but I think more importantly, you know, just in general, this ecosystem, having a few anchor tenants here in New York, the big companies who are cycling through some engineers right now, who now want to go to something smaller, more nimble, more local. We're starting to see a lot more, a lot more, um, uh, you know, acceleration around that. So it's been easier to hire. It's still a perpetual challenge, but I would, I would echo what Carter was saying. So anchor tenants, you mean the big, big um, investments that Google, Facebook companies like that yeah. or even and yeah, no exactly other, I mean I think you, you got you and the mayor you know working with Cheryl and I mean all, all of the you know, some of the big names it's just it's putting 
uh, you know, look, these are West Coast based companies, but having the, that anchor tenant, having jobs that are here, giving some people who want the security, bringing the engineers from the, from the East Coast who now experience life here and like, wow, it's not as busy or it's not as, it's not as whatever the, the negative connotation might have been. You know, there's, there is this perception sometimes on the West Coast, it's uncool to be out here in New York for whatever reason. And they, they come here, they spend a couple of years here, and they realize, there's a lot of great energy going on here. And I think it's telling, I mean, Marissa Mayer's, one of her first sort of biggest announcements since becoming the CEO of Yahoo, uh, you know, the redesign of Flickr, the acquisition of Tumblr on Monday, and the fact that that took place in Times Square in New York City. Um, obviously, I'm biased, but I, it does feel like um, increasingly it, a company that doesn't have a significant presence in New York City is at a major, major disadvantage. Also seeing this with VCs. So over the past year, I've met with probably, you know, a dozen different venture capital firms primarily based on the West Coast, and all of a sudden everyone realizes we need to have a bigger presence in New York City or we're going to miss out on, on some of the deal flow there. So that's, that's good to see. Just a point on that. So I raised money from Excel, uh, and I think uh, it's really cool to hear you guys speak because uh, in 2009, January, when I moved to New York, there wasn't really a great... Uh, a lot of infrastructure for being an entrepreneur. I wish I could have gone to General Assembly and said I'd worked out of my boyfriend's apartment um, and out of Starbucks uh, and out of libraries. Uh, there w weren't a, a ton of venture communities here in New York. In fact, Excel, after they invested in LearnMass, actually opened an office. Um, and we've started to see sort of the infrastructure grow. Um, which is one of the reasons why I say just everything's getting easier, which is fantastic. But also in a really cool way, uh, it's so collaborative and the spirit and the culture is just incredibly supportive. Um, so a bunch of my classmates from undergrad and college or in business school are all here, all running startups. And we get together, we share ideas, and there is no sense of competition, even though you may be both hunting after the same you know, tech entrepreneur um, to try to come and recruit them. Uh, there is this, this, just this general cool vibe of we're living in a really great time, a great ecosystem, a lot of collaboration. Um, and frankly, it's so freaking fun. Uh, <laughs> even though we're working so hard, it really is just a special time in New York. That's yeah. fantastic. Um, and I think you know an another thing um, that that raises as well. I don't know if anyone else has had experience in, in terms of, of the mentorship. I mean, something we always try to do in each of our panels is to find out, you know, if there is something that the city can do to help improve further, what, what would that one thing be? If, if there could be one more sort of investment, I mean, I, I've talked about some of the various initiatives we have underway. Um, you know, this is your opportunity to say, we're, we're constantly getting that input, we're trying to constantly get that feedback from the tech community to say, what is, what is that next step? What is that next initiative? You know, building on We Are Made in New York. Is it real estate? Is it, is it helping more talent to come here? What do you think would really move the needle? And I, and I also want to acknowledge, you know, Alexa, you're talking about things like VCs opening offices. It's a virtuous cycle. It's it in part, you know, it's thanks to companies like you. If, they hadn't, if Excel hadn't made that investment, maybe they wouldn't have moved here. They wouldn't have moved here for another five years. Yeah. Um, so you know, what, are there other ways that the city can be supporting this type of momentum that you see, that you would like to see? This is your big chance to make it happen. <laughs> Taxes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. Right. Um, yeah, more free money. But I mean, in the, <laughs> in the, but I think the. Do you, do you seriously no, no, feel I, I, that I, more I, access? I know, actually looking was, at it I from a free market. Kidding. Okay. I, I think uh, I think uh, what is the motivation is great, right? I think what we will need most it's it's now a, a virtual cycle. It's, mm -hmm. it's happening. Perseverance. This just needs to continue. We cannot say, oh, we're done, we're done, we're done, and now let's just like, let it like, take its own course. No, for the foreseeable, this is a you know, great sapling. We need to keep making sure that it actually grows into the tree that it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to see that you know, the, the mayor you know, continues this and puts it into structures that will continue on you know, for the foreseeable future so that we develop the strongest possible tech and, and start up ecosystem in New York that's, and, and it will take time. I think we're on a great path, but it will take time. How many days does the mayor have left? <laughs> oh, I 300 and something? Uh -huh. I think it's about 227, 25. Um, I'm, looking, I'm looking to the, to the mayor's I office. I would say um, laying foundations that are gonna be really hard for someone else to move. Um, as you said, right. you know, I feel like um, Bloomberg has been so incredibly supportive of us and it's so, it, it, and it's so effective. Um, making sure that no one can actually slow down that momentum. Mm -hmm. And so making sure whatever policies are in place, whatever grants are in place, that they're going to outlive him. And I think that's a great point. And also, 
I think it's really encouraging um, the tech community to speak up because I think oftentimes, and I probably fell into this as well. When I was, you know, prior to this, I was an entrepreneur, and you think. Uh, you know, we don't need sort of these conventional structures and, and um, institutions. Um, but the truth is that the city is listening, your elected officials are listening, and as sort of the future of New York City's economy and where you're going to be creating the jobs for the next generations of New Yorkers, everyone wants to know what they should be doing to keeping this going. So I really, you know, encourage all of you to continue to speak up and say this is what we need as the tech sector to sustain this growth. Um, you know, now, going forward um, in, in 2014 as well. I think already, I think that's happening. I think everyone's waking up to that agency, that political agency, is, and things like New York Tech Meetup are really crucial um, in those elements, but I think, uh, you know, just sort of keep it coming. Um, and one, one thing I think that's great is like the city's efforts towards marketing and startups. As a startup, wonderful. you often don't have, like, you don't have the money, but you also just don't have the, you know, you're focused on your product, or you know, you're focused on fundraising, right. and marketing is sort of like a different uh, mindset and a big distraction. But so many people have no idea about these startups. So it's a place where the city can have a major impact by putting their marketing muscle and their visibility behind these startups and saying, "Hey, here are these really small companies you probably haven't heard of, but check them out. You know, you can use them if they're consumer facing, and you can certainly apply for jobs there." Um, and I think that just is such a powerful way of engaging the, the community. And, and hopefully, we, you know, I mean, it's so amazing sitting in the back of a cab. And I'm like, oh my god, I know those. Those are my friends. <laughs> like, that's amazing. And you know, we, we can't wait to get in the back of a cab ourselves. And I think keeping that momentum going is a really powerful way that the, the city that can uh, plug in. Um, I love, I, and the city's very we're happy. We're recording the footage. That, right yeah, <laughs> the, the city, and I'd love to sort of bridge into how everyone can be a part of that. That marketing. The city's very happy to play that role. A, a little bit of background in history on the Made in New York mark that you saw in the video um, and that is at the center of the We Are Made in New York campaign. So it was initially created for the film and TV industry by Catherine Oliver, the commissioner of the Mayor's Office of Media and Entertainment, an industry a lot more visible than uh, the tech sector because people are out, you know, they're filming in neighborhoods. They are sometimes perhaps um, slightly disruptive to your everyday. <laughs> and what the campaign wanted to show is okay, so you know, maybe sometimes. Uh, you know, this could, you know, mess with your parking, et cetera, but this is having a massive economic impact on New York City. It's creating thousands of jobs, um, adding millions of dollars to the economy, not only through the actors and the people who are filming, but all of the, all the secondary businesses that benefit as a result. So similarly, as, as our office expanded and, and NYC Digital was added, the idea was, well, now we're seeing, first of all, the confluence and the convergence of film, TV, storytelling, and digital, um, and the line is really getting blurred in terms of where that distinction is. And also, let's recognize, similarly, the sector that maybe is a little less visible that people don't see. So creating the map that shows those companies and then creating the ad campaign that gets New Yorkers to be interfacing. And that campaign ran all across the subway, speaking to the diversity that really reflected the phenomenal diversity and vitality, um, how dynamic the sector is. And the idea was we really hope that a young kid riding on the subway would look at one of those images and say, hey, that, that could be me in a few years. Maybe I'll take another math class or another science class, be inspired, and what a cool job. I mean, look at how cool. And, and we didn't, you know, it was real people. And, and because the energy is really there. Um, for any tech company that wants to be a part of the campaign, just to explain a few options, you can use the hashtag uh, Made in New York uh, to talk about on Twitter why you, why you love being in New York City. We will retweet you, we'll promote you, we'll include you in our documentation. Uh, you can do the same thing on Tumblr, ob obviously, as well. Uh, you can create a video. So that video we had there was based on compiling and producing a, a sizzle reel out of do a dozen different videos that we got from tech startups in New York City reflecting why they're here. Um, there's all these um, directions for how to produce your video at wearemadenny.com slash, uh, slash video, actually, on the Participate tab. Uh, you create a, a one-minute video, um, and we'll add it into that reel, and you can start to you know, reflect that even further. Um, and finally, another way that you can participate is if you want the mark, if you want to apply to, ha to use that mark of distinction on your own website to say, we are made in New York, there is a workflow so you can apply for the mark, you can get added to the map, which is fully interactive, um, and if you meet the threshold for the requirements, uh, you can have that and you can help to further show your New York City pride. So this is a very inclusive campaign. We want everyone to be a part of it because you, you are the campaign. I mean, you are the best possible advertising. And we're looking to expand that further. We're going to be coming out with uh, more, more and more uh, stuff in the coming months. Um, we also expanded the campaign recently to the top 10 
engineering schools for, um, for recruiting in STEM um, across the country. So these ads are right now running in their local newspapers, um, and we're looking to do that. Obviously, it's very close. A lot of people have their jobs already, but we're going to build on that further for the fall. So just so that everyone knows we're, we're working you. on it. And the more feedback that you have, you know, we really welcome it because we want to help to amplify those stories. Um, so before we go to questions, I always love to give an opportunity for, um, for startups to talk about, you know, what, what are you, back to your own company, because you all have amazing companies that are really making an impact um, on people across the web, people across the world, of, of course, New Yorkers. What are you really excited about right now that's either something, you know, you just launched or you're about to launch that you want to make sure that people are aware of? So whoever, whoever wants to... Uh, to let us know. I mean, uh, as I was telling you earlier, like just yesterday we la launched the uh, Art Basel in Hong Kong uh, Art Fair uh, on Artsy, and uh, it's Art Fair is basically uh, a lot of the world's best, uh, for Art Hong Kong in particular, is sort of like the world's best uh, galleries from Asia, um, all coming to Hong Kong for this one fair, biggest uh, fair in Asia. And uh, Artsy's coverage of it is the largest and most comprehensive online coverage of any art fair in Europe or Asia ever. Um, so we're very excited about that. The response has been uh, tremendous. And uh, we look forward to actually breaking that record uh, in a few weeks uh, with our coverage of Art Basel in, in Basel, uh, Switzerland. Um, so that's something we're, we're very excited about. It's never been done before. So. Awesome. Good luck. Um, for LearnBest, uh, LearnBest Planning Services, uh, has created a seven-step program that we've trademarked. And it's called the Action Program. And we put every single customer who comes to Learn Best through a seven-step program where we literally help scrub every aspect of your finances, answer all of your dumb questions, make sure that you understand things like how to consolidate your student loans, to how to deal with your 401k at work, to help you understand your investments. Um, and it's just growing rapidly, and it's really cool to see uh, things working uh, and working quickly. So uh, this action program, and my, my ultimate dream was to make financial planning really consumable. It's a really crappy process right now. It's very antiquated. It's offline. You go find an expert. You pay them $3,000. You don't even know if you trust them. Often they're selling you products that you don't want. And I just said it should be a transparent market. It should be completely trusted, unbiased advice. Um, and it should be affordable. So. Uh, the fees for Learn Rest are about $300 and then $19 a month. Uh, and really just making financial planning a consumer product for all Americans. And that's why I get out of bed every morning. So it's cool to see it really, really rocking. That's awesome. Thanks, Alexa. Oliver? So I think the most important thing that, that gets me going is the fact that we get all this positive feedback from patients. We get several thousand feedback items every day. Half of them say, I love ZocDoc. The other half says they're really compelling stories. You know, we had people that said, I have this insurance. It usually takes me months and months to see a doctor. Mm -hmm. Because of you, I was able to find someone much sooner, just in time for my cancer to be still treatable. And, and these are the kinds of things where I know I'm helping people today and looking forward on what's going to come with you know, Obamacare and, and the ACA. We're about to add 30 million new patients to the, to the system and zero new doctors. Right? And it will require a system like ZocDoc where we can actually match you know, the, the doctors that have availability with the patients by uncovering the hidden supply of last minute cancellations and no-shows. And I'm excited about contributing to make the system work you know, in, in a system where only technology can help us make that. Wow, it's amazing. So life-changing, life-changing to life-enriching. <laughs> Um, it's seamless. So John yeah, for seamless, you know, the most exciting things that we do, I mean, obviously it's a two-sided network helping small businesses and helping consumers. So, you know, we get most excited about delivering innovation that's going to help both sides and, and not, not, you know, you train, you know, change that equilibrium. So, you know, one of the big challenges that we're looking to, uh, you know, help solve is, is putting more technology into small business to help them manage order flow more effectively, more efficiently, drives down costs, allows them to focus on, on making great food. And so, you know, we're excited. Uh, in the near future to be bringing more technology into the actual uh, you know, small business. And what that's going to do is help create a lot more clarity, a lot more transparency into where orders are in their flow for consumers as well. So people don't have to wait as long in their apartments or homes thinking, where's my order? And, and so it, we're, we're getting ready to, uh, to roll some of that out. Which, so we're really excited about that. Because in that world, we're helping the small business you know, focus on what it is they do really well and helping consumers you know, get a, just a richer experience that they can't get you know, through the paper menu and the phone. Helping startups 
CEOs uh, keep working. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Thank you for feeding right, me. Right. <laughs> Who here is a seamless <laughs> user as a company? Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right. Almost Thank you on all. On a daily basis. Um, so fueling productivity. Yeah. So I mean, really, all of you are you're changing lives. You're enriching lives. Um, I think it's really fascinating. So. Um, We'd love to take some questions from the audience. Um, if anyone would like to ask our esteemed panel of Made in Your Companies um, you know, what it's been like to start up, just feel free to raise your hand. I think we have a mic. Say, no one at all? This is a great group. Oh, hi, Sandrine. <laughs> OK. Anything, all right, nothing from Twitter, <laughs> anything along those lines that anyone wants to ask? Great. Right. I mean, I guess you guys answered every question that everybody had um, at Internet Week. OK, good. Well, I mean, on that note, um, we know that Internet Week was running behind, so we might as well wrap up a little bit early. If no one has any questions at all, um, I'd like to thank you all for being here. And, and very importantly, I'd like to thank our wonderful panelists for joining us this morning. Thanks so much. And you can learn more, you can learn more at wearemadeinny.com.